Hey guys, this is John and welcome to another Climbing the Rating Ladder video. I'm playing Kamooks here at 1088 rating. Another Canadian, I think I played a Canadian last game in Climbing the Rating Ladder. Shout out to those, those Canadians watching. Okay, D4, D5. Let's play Queen's Gambit. We'll go C4. I tend not to play too much London system or uh, other types of non-Queen's Gambit stuff when they just simply play D5 on move one. Sometimes I'll dabble in like a Tory attack if they play Knight F6, but I usually go Queen's Gambit. So we have the Queen's Gambit declined here, which is black playing E6. This is the 10 plus 5 game. Bishop E7, yep. This is a completely legit move order for black. This takes the sting out of a bishop g5 move. I just straight up can't play bishop g5 without blundering the bishop. I'm going to make this capture here, establishing the two center pawns against one, and then play bishop f4. This is the next best square to, to bishop g5. Hope you're all doing well. I'm recording this at about 7.30 at night. Feeling pretty good. It's been a productive day. Playing a lot of longer games lately, which I've enjoyed because that allows me to really get into the commentary. So I'm excited to see what happens in this one. The Queen's Gambit decline is a pretty good option if you're um, looking for a solid defense against d4. I think almost every strong player has had exposure to this line at some point in their chess career. Yep, knight f6. Let's play e3 now. Pretty standard development here. I'm looking to play bishop d3 next if I get the chance. We'll see if black tries to beat me to the punch and maybe play bishop f5. Black does, right on cue. Okay, so the thing about this approach for black, it's an ambitious one. The thing about this approach, though, it does leave open the possibility of queen b3 for me. So I'm looking at that. I think there is a line, actually, queen b3 hitting the b7 pawn where black can play knight c6 and play to gambit that pawn. Uh, I'm not too thrilled about going into that. So I think I may play knight e2 here. You can leave the knight flexible on the white side of the queen's gambit. Declined exchange variation, which is what I'm doing here. You can leave this piece flexible if you want, and it does have the benefit of going to e2 or f3 as a result. So it's not uncommon for that knight to um, only be developed last of the minor pieces, actually. Like, had black not played bishop f5, let's say castle, Bishop d3 followed by queen c2 tends to be my standard procedure there. So back to the position in front of us. Black does castle here. Let's play knight g3. This is my idea. Attack this bishop and see where black goes with it. If it goes back to g6, I may play h4. I may decide to continue pushing forward. Yeah, bishop g6. So... I'd say so far, Black is playing a very solid game. But kind of like my last Climbing the Rating Ladder video, who my opponent, by the way, thanks to him, he ended up showing up in the comments. Kind of like that one. I am throwing a flank pawn at this opponent. And we'll see how Black reacts to that. They've already committed their king to the king side. I think quite likely Black plays h6 or h5. Yep, h6 looks like one of the more solid moves. And now I can decide. I can go ahead and play h5 and chase the bishop one more time. Or I could play bishop d3 right away and look to, to trade for this bishop immediately. I'm trying to think which option is best. There's kind of things to be said about both approaches, actually. And likely I'm going to try to castle queenside here and attack the black king if I can. So I'm not sure this decision is impactful enough where I should burn much time pondering it. So let's go ahead and play bishop d3. I'm going to opt to leave my pawn where it's at in the hopes that if I get to move my knight, let's say into f5, I might be able to play g4, g5 with the support of the h pawn. Whereas if I put the pawn on h5, I could still go for this plan, but I wouldn't have the h pawn to support the idea. And let's see what black does here. I will be curious uh, if black tries to defend on the, the king side in some way or if they focus on development. I think focusing on development would be smart here. Black still needs to get this knight into the game. Even if black sees that my knight is coming to f5, I don't think they should play to try to stop it 
because you really can't. If you play g6 here, you're going to lose the pawn on h6. So black's best bet here is to sit tight on the king side. When your king is under pressure, and um, especially when you've already made a pawn move, you really want to avoid further pawn moves if you can, because that can lead to a fatal weakening of the position. Okay, c5. I like the spirit of this move. I think that's a completely legitimate move. Black's looking for counterplay elsewhere, maybe looking to put the knight here. I'm debating between castle and queenside immediately. Knight f5, perhaps even taking, I think could be considered too. All those look pretty normal to me. So knight f5, take d4. I take the queen, but then knight c6 gains a tempo on my queen. I don't think I really want to go here, take, and then knight takes. While playable, it feels a little slow. So I'm not sure about knight f5. I think I'm probably going to castle. Yeah, let's, let's castle queenside. And assuming black takes on d4, I may take with the pawn. I haven't quite made up my mind yet, but I may take with the pawn in the interests of prosecuting my attack quicker, not having to lose time in the event of queen takes, knight c6. So far, I'm happy with this game, like how it's developed um, for me, but also for Black. Like I, I think the way that Black is playing, especially at this rating level, is uh, plenty solid. They got their king to safety quickly. They played a solid opening. They're now looking to create counterplay, and I would assume get this knight into the game. There it goes, knight c6. So I have no issues with how Black has handled this opening. I think good stuff. All right, so knight comes in. I could take here and go for this pawn. I am noticing that this is possible. There's also this knight f5 move. If I take and go for the pawn, I wonder if this is an issue. Um, I could play queen d4 there or queen b5. Knight f5 is fun, but may not be best, let's say, because again, take. So I'm kind of leaning towards capturing here. Just debating in this resulting position, let's say queen a5, what I would do, probably play something like king b1 there. Black may have a little burst of an initiative, but I don't quite see the compensation for the pawn. So I'm really trying to fact check my opponent on whether the pawn on d5 is uh, actually immune from capture. You know, are they trying to play a gambit or something? I'm going to go for it. Let's see what they got. So I know I deviated from my original attacking plan with knight f5, but a better opportunity, it seems to me, has presented itself in the middle of the board. Yes, I'm a little concerned about my king, but if I can tuck it on b1 at some point, that should be fine. I'm fully aware in doing this, though, that the c file is becoming open. We have to be conscious of that. If black puts a rook on c8 or something, let's say. So... Kind of an important decision for black here. Bishop takes c5 is the obvious move, but what to do after knight takes d5? That is key. You don't want to just trade down into a pawn down endgame, let's say. Queen takes, rook takes d5, and I'm on the bishop. That's much, much better for white. So black should look to complicate the game in some way, but how to do that in a smart way. Knight b4, hitting the queen. Again, I think I can play queen d4, attacking the knight. Or perhaps queen b5. The fact that I have two plausible looking moves there gives me um, some confidence. Okay, so black is thinking a little bit here. I think ideally you should have your response to d take c5 in mind before you play knight c6. Okay, black does play knight b4. And I will figure out whether I want to put the queen here or here. Queen b5 or queen d4. Instinctively, I'm leaning towards queen b5. And that's because it prevents queen a5 as a defense. So that looks nice to me. I have a2 defended, so no worries there. So queen a5, what's black going to do about the knight? If it retreats... I got to imagine I have um, options like uh, like if it goes to a6, maybe pawn c6. 
If it goes back to c6, then I could take b7 even. Remember this bishop, this was a big thing in the last Climbing the Rating Ladder video. Queen d4 also looks decent, but black could repeat, and they could also play queen a5. So let's opt for this one, and we'll see what black does. If pawn a5, by the way, then I really like my queen's position on b5 because it can't be chased by a pawn. Black will have passed up the option to play a6. So it's a dilemma for black what to do with this piece now. Little time check here. So I've got about six minutes. Black has a little bit less than that. We are on move 14, so getting into the middle game. We do have that five-second increment, but I'd like to manage my time a bit better than I did in the last game. If I were playing black in this position, it's tough. I think I would play the knight back to c6 for lack of a better move. I really don't think knight a6, c6 is what black wants. Maybe they could play knight c7 there, but then queen takes b7 and I'm on the knight on, on c7. So I think for better or worse, I would retreat the knight. And after queen takes b7, play something like rook c8. I think you want to keep the queens on board here if you can for black, because you're already down one pawn, possibly going down another pawn. Black has to do everything possible to keep this complicated. Okay, so black ops for this one. Yeah, now I could play a3 if I really want to chase this knight backwards. But it's not absolutely forced. There's other tempting-looking moves here, like knight f5, threatening to take and then play bishop d6. So that's on my radar as well. Um, one difference here, though, if I play a3, knight a6, c6 isn't as strong as it was before because black can actually take, and they would not be hanging the knight. So maybe a3 is not the best, therefore. Could play queen takes b7. Seems a little bit greedy right now, though. I know there's no rook b8, but there is bishop takes c5. I think I'm going to go for this knight f5 move. I mean, I like my queen position. I think knight f5 looks justified here. And we have a threat in mind with this move. This is the important thing. Maybe there will still be some opportunities towards the black king, but for now, I'm just happy that this creates a threat. And here's one thing I want to mention while I have a moment. Before I'm playing a move in a chess game, I'm trying to visualize the move that I want to play, and I'm trying to consider any possible way that my opponent can refute that move. Okay? I know this sounds super obvious, especially to those who are more experienced out there, but that is the essence of building a sense of danger. You're visualizing the move you want to play, but you're also trying to refute that move. You're trying to put yourself as much as you can in your opponent's shoes and verifying whether that's a safe move or not. Looking at the checks, captures, major threats, you can't uh, assume that your opponent is going to be cooperative. You have to be rigorous in trying to refute your own move. So on knight f5, a move like that, it is a, a knight on a loose square. The knight is undefended there. I didn't explicitly say it, but I'm making sure that that's a safe move. I'm looking at any possible way even if it's just like a cursory glance or something I'm carrying over from, from another variation, that way that black can refute uh, this, this idea. You know, I'm trying to consider any way that this could go sideways for me. So the knight comes back. Okay, I think we have the potential makings of a fork coming here. So I could take here right away, but then there's knight takes as an option, and black does sidestep the whole bishop d6 thing. But if I take here, black has to be real careful. So I think I will capture that. And if you can anticipate the direction I'm going with this fork comment, um, well done. Not sure it'll even happen, but it's possible. Yeah, I think I'll take... This just seems like a free pawn with tempo. So let's go take it. So I'm thinking if black goes queen e8 to defend the knight, then I can play queen take c6. And on queen takes c6, knight takes e7, forks the king and the queen. And white will win two minor pieces in that transaction, actually, if black plays through that whole line. So this is looking pretty grim for black at this point. 
I think Rook C8 is more or less the only move here. It's not pretty, but that gives Black a fighting chance at least. Uh, Bishop takes C5. I'm scooping the knight, so something must be done about this piece. It can't move again because I take on E7, so I think by process of, elim of elimination, it has to be this one. Queen C8. I can play knight takes E7 anyways. Comes with check. Knight takes, queen takes. Pick up a piece. Let's see what black does. And since I've identified rook c8 as probably the best move, I'm now spending my mental effort figuring out what I'm going to do against that. Because if I can play something quickly and keep black under pressure, okay, good job. Black does figure out that move. If I can play something quickly here and keep black under pressure, that would be ideal. So I'm looking at moves like e4. Certainly taking comes to mind. Taking and then bishop d6. Good option. The only thing I don't like about that is it's a little cooperative. Uh, I might be striving for a bit much there, but there, there's rook e8. I kind of like keeping my knight now, but bishop takes c5 is a threat if black gets a chance. So I have to bear that in mind. Rook h3 is really interesting to me. Rook h3, bishop takes c5, and then just rook g3, because I think when I play rook g3, I'm pretty much right on top of black. Bishop takes h6, rook takes g7, knight takes h6. So many threats there. This pawn's also a little bit loose. Uh, bishop d6 is another option. Bishop d6, bishop takes, knight takes, rook c7 maybe. I feel like I have pretty good control, but I'm looking for that extra little oomph, you know? Let's play the rook h3 move. Let's go for it. Really love this bishop still, too. Prevents moves like rook c7. These squares are just absolute no-goes for black. But let's play this into the attack. Idea rook g3, quite simply. If black plays to attack the, uh, the bishop on f4, then maybe I'll go for this plan in here and here. And I figure Black's Knight is a little bit sidelined when that goes down. Oh, I should also note, uh, Queen takes c8 was not working. Queen takes c8, Knight takes e7, because Black was defending backwards with the Knight. So I am still trying to look for fork opportunities, but I'm just not really seeing them. Okay, Bishop takes c5. Logical, and let's deploy Rook g3. Here we go. Looking like a critical position. Knight takes h6, rook takes g7, bishop takes h6. These are all threats. Okay, now on this one, I was thinking knight takes pawn with check. Possibly knight takes f7 to follow there. I do very much like the look of that. I was going to mention that variation, but I couldn't get the words out of my mouth in time. So I think I'm going to go for this here. Take, because it hits the queen. I can also back up with knight g5 if I need to. Yeah, let's do it. Getting down to crunch time here. I have three minutes to my opponent's minute and a half. Only two legal moves for black in this position. King h7 played. Yeah, now without knight takes f7, this idea might be questionable for me because I do have a lot of stuff under attack. But I think this should be working for me because I hit the queen. And... The defenses for the Black King are getting stripped away here. Still a little bit unclear. Okay, Queen here. Um, Knight g5 almost certainly will be my move. I'm also thinking if I can take on d5 somewhere very soon. Not going to do it right away. Knight takes d5, Queen takes on f7. So let's play the check. Play the mandatory move and see where black goes. Make black make that decision while we can think. It is interesting. I feel like knight takes d5 is critical on the next move. I'm a little bit leery of it because of this diagonal or the file situation. I could play rook f3 if I want to be safe here. Rook f3 is pretty logical. But knight takes d5 would be... I think the critical move. Hmm. 
Yeah, a lot of possibilities down that C file, though. I'm not sure I like it so much. It's also rook takes d5, but my rook is hanging. So I think I'm going to go with the rook f3 move here, folks. I think it's, practically speaking, just the easiest thing to do. There is an idea here, or even with like bishop a3. Ooh, interesting. Don't think it should work, but something to be aware of. Interesting possible play. Yeah, let's go rook f3. Don't want to spend too much time. I'm fully willing to admit, though, that this may not be the best move, but I'm trying to make a good, um, uh, good decision with the clicking, the the ticking clock being the big factor here. All right, so my opponent under time duress at this point. Remember, rook b8 is still met by this move. And if knight takes f4 to eliminate that strong bishop, I'm taking with the rook with tempo. The position's messy, but when I cast my eye over my pieces, I do like that I have a lot of things defended. And sometimes even redundantly defended. So what is black going to do? Bishop a3 would be really interesting. I mean, if black plays that, I, I would like the spirit of it. I don't know that the time is going to be their friend if it gets complicated like this, but that would actually threaten queen takes c3. Okay, d4. Yeah, another interesting option. I saw that I have this move against uh, d4 along with discoveries. I could definitely look for a discovery here. Probably I'm not going to take. So probably going to err on the side of playing one of these. Yeah, let's play this knight here. Try to keep the gas pedal to the floor with my opponent's low time. Now, queen f5, maybe bishop in here is starting to look good. Okay, goes back, but I can probably scoop this. There are discoveries against my queen. So remember, this, this file is opening up, but I don't think they're significant enough. Like if knight d8, I can actually pick up the... The rook. Okay. So my opponent resigned. Let's tell them thanks for the game. Yeah, I think knight takes f6 and didn't really see much there for, for black. All right. Um, I think a pretty good game from my opponent here, once again. Um, similar to the game against uh, Llama last time, the previous climbing the rating ladder game. I think for this rating in particular, 1088, my opponent played well. Oh, and yet again, look at this. We have a viewer. <laughs> Let's just tell him what's up. Yeah, and I really do believe that they played well. I think um, the way that they handled this was... Quite good for this level. Black knew what they were doing in the opening. Probably it got a little squirrely here with, with the knight c6 takes knight b4 operation. I, I would say that is the phase of the game where things started to go wrong for Black. But I'll be curious what the engine thinks. Yeah, the early bishop f5. I have encountered this from time to time. It, it's playable. But I think this plan, trying to gain, gain time for the king side attack, is actually pretty good. All right, awesome. Maybe we'll have another opponent um, who writes their comments. I always try to pin people's comments if they come in and write them. So maybe we'll have someone who can, who can do that. I'll actually just tell them that. Okay, so yeah, I am curious about that moment. I'm also curious about some of the complications that occurred. Maybe this rook h3 decision by me. And here playing uh, like rook f3. This is the one move, if I were to guess, that the engine is, is not going to like in comparison to others. I think knight takes d5 would be critical. But it seemed like a decent enough decision. The position's tough for black to play. Maybe bishop a3 is something because it does threaten this and seeks to open the file. 
I did see that I have this move if I ever really need to uh, bail out, attack the bishop, firmly defend c3. That was my parachute move there. But let's take a look. We'll go to the game review. Oh, Crystal League. Okay. <laughs> Whatever that means. So I got an 84.2 accuracy to my opponent's 71.8. So probably some mistakes from both sides then. This is all Queen's Gambit decline stuff. Bishop e7. This move order used to be popular here, as opposed to knight f6, which does allow this pure uh, exchange variation where the bishop comes here. I have a lot of games on my channel with this. I also recommend this in my d4 course on Chessable, which is free, by the way, if you want to check it out. Uh, so bishop f4. Yeah, in this position, if we go to the opening book, black usually plays c6 or castles, I believe. Uh, but bishop f5 is up there too. Okay, so bishop f5 is actually the second most popular move here. Yeah, it's a little bit uh, cut off for you guys, but you'll have to take my word for it. So yeah, I didn't remember a whole lot about this. I just vaguely remembered queen b3, knight c6 is playable here. Because if you develop the light square bishop early in these queen's gambit positions from the black side, you have to reckon with queen b3. you got to have a plan if white comes out here and attacks those two points. And if we click into the engine analysis here, I think it's this knight c6 move because d5 is defended. And if white takes black up on this, I just remember this leading to reasonable compensation for black due to the knight c2 threat. There's some theory here. So I opted for knight ge2. I do like this variation. And we can click into the book icon. Castles or c6 are usually played. Okay, so black castled. Uh, maybe bishop g6. Yeah, I could see that being an inaccuracy because it does encourage me to play h4. This is the case in a lot of openings, like the Carol Khan, you see this idea, white throwing the h-pawn down the board, trying to advance on the bishop with tempo. It's kind of a nice operation for white with black having already committed to castling short. You know, so maybe bishop e6 is the better move here. And indeed, let me move the webcam so you guys can see this. Indeed, in this position, bishop e6 is overwhelmingly played. And I think white still angles for the f5 square. Okay. Yeah, maybe black even was aware of something like this because black did play c5, remember? This looks like a much more strategic situation, though. Note that white is taking on c5 and castling queenside every time here. They're not even trying to go for a kingside attack. And then we get to a more stable game where black has an isolated queen's pawn. But surely this is playable for black. If they're worse here, it's not by much. Interesting. Okay, I'll have to keep that in mind too because I do get these positions. So I go ahead and play h4. And I think black made the right call playing h6. The, the bishop is on the verge of being trapped. If you play h5, I feel like bishop e2 at minimum is annoying for black. Hard to defend that pawn on h5. So h6 seems logical. And I was debating here whether to play h5 or bishop d3. Again, if I play h5 right away, it would reach virtually the same position. Just the only difference is my pawn is on h5 instead of h4. But I kind of like having that pawn back because I feel like it gives a little more force to the g4, g5 idea if I can ever get that working. Also, it frees up the h5 square. Could be relevant in some situations. I'd say normally you would want to have your pawn closer to the enemy king in a pawn storm like this. But you got to think about where your break's going to occur. So let, let's just say... Um, this is going to be kind of cooperative, but let's just say something like this happens. We'll even turn the engine off because we don't particularly care about the eval. Uh, it's kind of nice that when g4 is played, I have this h4 pawn to help that move, <laughs> even though saying g4 is best. Uh, if ever I were to go g5, it's going to be a little less destructive. I'd like to take with the pawn and open the file, open the h file towards their king. That was my reasoning there with bishop d3 directly, which is apparently fine. Okay, so take on d3 seems fine. Yeah, and it doesn't like c5. Interesting. It doesn't like that move. I thought that was a reasonable play. The engine's suggesting bishop d6 going for a trick. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not bishop d6. That is a, a theme, by the way, trying to trade the bishops, even though you've already moved the bishop again. 
Knight C6. I don't see anything particularly wrong with this. Yeah, take, take, let's say castles. I would take white here for sure. It just seems like my play is easier in this position, but the engine is not particularly impressed. It's only giving a modest advantage. Okay. So on C5, it does recommend that I take on C5 or even castle, even castle short, as we saw in the other games where black's playing the bishop back to E6. So castle queenside, on the other hand, interesting. So it immediately spits out C4 or C takes D4. I thought this was more likely if black was going to play it. I was planning on taking probably with the pawn. Uh, again, so I don't lose time if this happens. Even though black has the isolated pawn, I don't like having to move my queen again. But evidently, this is okay. This is reasonable play for black. Looks a little scary because of all the heat that could be coming on around the king, but the engine is not concerned. Says black's fine here, and, and in fact, maybe my king is the one that can become a bit open. Hmm. Okay, so black ops for the c5 move, and I do not take my castle. Yeah, c4 would be a totally different approach, by the way, to taking on d4. Let's say I go here, looking for knight f5. Again, the engine's just not too concerned, probably because knight b4, knight d3 is annoying. If I jump in right away, then I have to deal with the black knight coming in. Might have to be sacking an exchange or something um, if I don't want to slow down. But yeah, I could see how this is speculative. It's probably not justified in a serious game. So if I have to waste time playing a move such as a3, that's going to give black some leverage against my structure if they can ever play b5, b4. The game is getting sharper here. Still opposite side castling and mutual attacks, but it might take a while for my attack to get off the ground. Wow, look at this idea, a5. And it wants to send the knight into b4. Let's say I play something direct here. Yeah, knight b4. Look at this. Little fishing pole idea around my king. The double exclamation point move. Take and then take with a pawn, I'm going to assume. Open the rook, attack the knight, and white's on the run. Okay, very much an engine line, but it shows you the resources available here. But there's probably a small window of time where black can do something like what I just demonstrated. I think. Yeah, this knight c6 move, I think it's fair to say that this is where things begin to turn because I take on c5 seems to be the right decision. I'm planning knight takes d5. So in the case of this take here, I thought this might be a, a decent way for black to play and then move the queen. Uh, ooh, I didn't see this nuance. Okay, this, this is nice. Yeah, even here, I just assumed this... I stopped calculating at this point. I assume this must be good for me. I'm up a pawn. I'm attacking the bishop. But the engine says, wait a second. Wait a second here. Because knight b4 hits the rook and the pawn. And importantly, I can't take on c5 because knight d3 check. Well, I could, apparently. This is somehow still even. But knight d3 check is the idea. And then what? I play like bishop d6. I have to scramble with something like this. But this is not what I wanted from a position where I thought it was winning a pawn clean and torturing them in an endgame. Wow, so even there, some resources for black. It's suggesting play rook d7 instead. You know, if this position appeared on the board, I would definitely not snap off the bishop right away. That's safe to say. So, um, yeah, I probably would come to my senses and play something like this. Idea of this, go here. But some compensation for black, for sure. Along with moves such as queen b6 in this position. Also a move I didn't consider. And it's suggesting I come back here. As my king is a little bit open, I'm, I'd have to shift into consolidation mode, try to get some pieces off the board and play to win with the extra pawn. So it does appear that bishop takes c5 is black's best chance, just giving the d5 pawn. Let's see what the verdict is after this. So knight b4, queen b5, and that's just annoying for black. Again, if the knight retreats, there's various problems, like I thought this and c6 was good for me, which does appear to be the case here with the engine. Idea take, I take the knight. Uh, knight c6, I think I can take b7, no problem. Uh, there's probably other moves too. Yeah. Knight f5 is probably good here as well. So black played a5. 
And I went ahead and played knight f5. So difference here, I was describing if a3 hitting the knight, I think this is more acceptable because if I tried the c6 idea, it doesn't work as well because um, I can't scoop up the knight in this case. The rook is defending. So I just opted for knight f5. And my idea is if I get a chance, knight takes e7, queen takes e7, bishop d6 with the skewer. So I think rook e8 would be a reasonable move. Black didn't do that. They went back with the knight. Yeah, and I saw no reason to go here. And instantly I thought of this pattern. I've actually used this pattern in some games. It's kind of a typical tactics trainer pattern too. If black defends the attack knight by going here, we have this really satisfying queen takes c6 move, luring black into a fork and carnage. White has won two minor pieces there. So those patterns that you accumulate over the years of doing puzzles, playing lots of games, uh, they come in handy in moments like this where tactics are brewing, but the whole picture has not quite come into view. But to Black's credit, Camus played rook c8 here. Yeah, now I went rook h3. This was kind of a tough moment. I wasn't sure what to do. I wasn't thrilled about this. Although playable, I felt like this took some pressure off black. Like most importantly, it gave black a really easy decision. Knight takes e7. I don't like playing in a way, especially if I'm playing down on rating or if my opponent's in time pressure where I'm almost forcing them to make good decisions. This is a concept I, I could talk at length and I have in past videos, but um, it's this whole idea. Like if you're trying to outplay people, usually you want to give them as many choices to go uh, wrong as possible, leave positions open-ended because if you feel it's complicated and you have some sort of edge on them, whether it's the clock, skill advantage, whatever, better for them to have lots of options where there's only one or two best options versus playing a forcing line where they might only have like two legal moves or whatever. So that's kind of my philosophy here. I didn't see anything concrete with that. The engine likes bishop d6. I could kind of see that take, take with the pawn. Although this is getting a little open, the control of c7 is nice. But I'm pretty okay with rook h3. I think this is a legit move as well. Looking to get the rook into the attack. So bishop takes c5, rook g3. And this is getting into plus 2.5 to 3 territory here. It's suggesting king h8 and let the pawn fall. That looks really tough for black. Uh, so knight h5. Oh, rook takes d5. I didn't even think about this move. I should have considered this move. Yeah, I got tunnel vision here, guys. So if you saw rook takes d5, I mean, that's an interesting option. It does say that it's better. I was pretty focused in on this, which does appear to be good too. Ah, but here, here as well, rook takes d5. Hit the queen, hit the knight. Yeah, wasn't even on my radar. Interesting, and that's plus six. Okay, so knight takes f7, not the best move. I was happy that I was attacking the queen and that the knight could come back. Saying black should go queen b6. Okay, that looks a little depressing though. But I guess point taken. Trade the queens and try to fight for counterplay with white being a little bit loose here. Yeah, something like this. Kind of like the game, but queen's off the board and now black's counterattacking. Hmm. So still some chances for black there, but the position's messy. Time's getting low. Check. Okay, and it does actually say rook f3 at this point is a decent decision. I was a little bit nervous about this position still, but it is plus four. The unforgiving evaluation of the engine <laughs> um, says black is pretty much busted here. I thought this would have been a cute try at this point, looking for queen takes c3. But again, I saw this move looks to be safe. Looks like this is also good. I mean, that would take some, some nerve for me to do that or even think about it. But point taken, I'm threatening the queen now. Also, there's a big threat on f8. So <laughs> apparently I'm winning here too. Black opted for d4 though. Okay, I went knight here. Again, not necessarily the best move, but probably good enough. Yeah. And black retreated the bishop, and I was going to take it, but they resigned before I did. Yeah, I think even on other moves, queen retreats, this is looking to be uh, a very tough end game for black. Let's say take, 
Bishop takes, move the king just to step out of the file here. When the dust settles, I should be up two pawns. Three pawns, maybe. Yeah, black has three pawns. I have six pawns remaining. So should definitely be enough to win. All right, very interesting Queen's Gambit decline game featuring opposite side castling. That can occur in some lines of the QGD. I think there's some things to note there, like the role of the light square bishop. If you can chase this bishop, and especially if you haven't committed to castling short yet from the white side, sometimes you can conjure up an attack and then castle long. So I, I think that's a nice nuance. Bishop e6 pulling back this way, so h4 wouldn't make as much sense here. It doesn't come with tempo. It wouldn't be threatening to trap the bishop. And black should look to play in the center. And although black did that, that in the game, it just turned out to be a little mistimed. Although this position, apparently fine for black if they play c4 or c takes d4 and look for counterplay against my king, but the lines are quite complicated. So, you know, pretty good game by Camus. Again, at this rating level, this is climbing the rating ladder. So I try to, to talk a little bit about the differences at various levels. This is a rating level where if you play clean tactical chess and you're not committing huge self-induced blunders, you're going to go far. And considering the circumstances, Black is playing an IM. Uh, they're a viewer, so apparently they know that you know I might have been recording this game. Um, this is not planned, by the way. These are all random opponents that I'm just looking for and clicking on their seeks. But under these all these circumstances, I think they played excellently, and they would have beaten a lot of players um, even somewhat higher rated for sure. Hard to say, but I don't think Black made any absolutely fatal errors until basically the very end when they had almost no time. You know, hanging the queen, of course, but uh, Black made some pretty good decisions up until that point that kept the game competitive. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this climbing the rating ladder video. As always, let me know if you have any questions. And thanks, thanks again for watching, especially those of you who stick around for the analysis. All right, later, guys.